Perfect. So, hi, good evening, everyone. Hi, Matali. Hi, Mayank. Hi, Prashant. Welcome to the session. My name is Talha Parkar. I am from Havish M. Consulting. Today's session will be conducted by Disha, who is an intern with us working in the area of analytics, specifically focused on data transformation, working on Excel Power Query. Uh, before we start, I'd like to take a few minutes to just introduce Havish M. Consulting, and then I'll hand it over to Disha, who will walk you guys through various aspects in Power Query. Let me just uh, minimize my screen. Perfect. So uh, we are Havisham Consulting. We're an analytics startup. And our area of uh, the founder is Mr. Havish Madhupati. And I work as a consultant in the area of analytics and data strategy. Our area of work is digital transformation, analytics, data visualization, business intelligence, and workflow automation. We work with a variety of clients across sectors. Uh, the top row is energy and power sector, wherein we are working with Sterling Power, Renew, Ajay Power, Indigrid. The We also work with CPG, and we also do a lot of trainings at a lot of PSUs, such as Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum, and Navad. Let me quickly scroll down. So what we do can be categorized into six buckets. We write formulas for clients, uh, improve their existing business models, create complex reusable formulas for the clients, create business dashboards, uh, do data modeling, connecting multiple data sources together within Power BI and creating a data model, creating a workflow architecture, right? So that's about Avisham Consulting. I'll stop sharing my screen and Disha, you can get started. Yes, sir. Just a second. Good evening, RJS. Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. So my name is Disha Avdhani. This session is about introduction to Power Query. So first, let me tell you what is Power Query. So uh, imagine you have a lot of different puzzle pieces, uh, for example, data scattered all over the place. And uh, Power Query is like a magical tool that helps you gather all those puzzle pieces, organize them neatly and clean them up if they are a bit messy. It's like having a, a, a superhero assistant for you that makes your data easy to understand and work with. So uh, Power Query facilitates the ETL process, extract, transform, load. What it means is, extract means you gather things from different places. So it's like the same. Uh, you gather the data from different places, like from Excel file, from folder, and then you might clean up the data or fix or assemble the things in the data which, which are not uh, correct, like cleaning it, cleaning them properly. Then finally, you need to load the data into your Excel sheet to analyze the data at the end. So uh, let me discuss why Power Query is useful. The first usefulness is data cleaning and transformation. So uh, for example, you have a data set with inconsistent date formats. Power Query can be used to standardize the uh, date format across the entire data set, making it easier to analyze. And then data consolidation, uh, you, uh, for example, you have multiple Excel files with similar data structures. So Power Query can merge or append these files into a single data set for you for the first further analysis. Then uh, removing duplicates means, uh, for example, your data set contains duplicate records. So Power Query can uh, identify and remove duplicates based on specified criteria, uh, also ensuring data accuracy. It can do filtering and sorting also. So uh, handling missing or uh, erroneous data means, for example, uh, your data set has missing values or errors. So a Power Query enables you to handle missing or erroneous data by replacing, removing, or uh, impacting, uh, like imputing values also there. Then we have combining data from multiple sources, as I told you. So uh, for example, you have a data from different sources, such as Excel, CSV, and other databases. So it will help you to combine and transform that data from these diverse sources into a unified format, which will help you further. Then data type conversions, aggregating and summarizing data. Uh, for example, you have a detailed transactional data. 
uh, but you need to create summary reports. So Power Query can uh, aggregate and summarize data based on specific criteria also. Uh, other than that, it will help you to speed up data preparation and uh, cleansing tasks, saving valuable time, obviously. So, um, so uh, it will ensure data accuracy and consistency through powerful transformation, which we'll see later for, uh, with the help of examples. And it will automate the repetitive task, which you need to do manually. So uh, because of Power Query, you don't need to do it manually. All will be done by Power Query only. So data integration using Power Query. So uh, this is the scenario which is given. Uh, for example, can you can you please tell me how you can uh, compile the uh, files from a folder if there are three or four Excel files in a folder? So how will you compile that? Anyone? To be very frank, I have done with with this one Excel software. I have not done with Power Query. There is one software in the Excel is a utility. So by that we can do. Okay. But not so, through Power Query. Okay. So it will be very easy through Power Query. Uh, let me take you with the example. So first of all, we need data from a folder to compile that data. So we'll go to data in Excel, then get data from file and then from folder from where we need the, uh, we need our three files to be compiled. Richard, do you want to show the folder first? Yes, sir. Yeah, just show the folder so that everyone has an idea of how many files, what is the data that is to be compiled? Okay, okay. yes, sir. Okay, so these are the three files, uh, different months data, Feb 2008, Jan 2008, and March 2008. In these files, this data is there. Let me show you. Account, department, and sum of account. So all the three files, uh, this same, similar data will be there, only month will be different. So what we'll do is get data from file, from folder, We'll select the folder here. Then we'll go to transform data. Now you can see that here many columns are there, name, extension, date, uh, date accessed, date modified, date created, but our main data will be in this content, content column, which is binary. So obviously we need Excel files. We need to extract the Excel file from this binary content. We don't need this binary. So uh, other than this content, we should remove all these columns, which, which are not needed. So we need to select this column, right click it and remove other columns. Then uh, to extract the data from this binary, we need to extract Excel files. So what we need to do is, we'll go to add column, then custom column. Here we'll write Excel.workbook because obviously uh, our data will be Excel files now. So we'll, uh, we'll write Excel.workbook. And the, it will ask for the column name. So column name will be content. From here, from this uh, column only, binary files are there. And we need to extract the Excel files from this column. So we'll give this column and click OK. Now we, we got the table. If you will click here, you will see that the data will come here. And if you click on this, it will show you. Uh, you can uh, go to the inner data. Wait.
now we need to extract this column so uh, we do extract by uh, clicking this now we got the data now we don't need this content uh, column so we'll remove this the data is here we we got the tables you can see all the data is here for jan 2008 feb 2008 march 2008 so we also don't need uh, these tables the uh, sorry these columns so we'll remove them now we'll again extract it expand it sorry now uh, you can see the all the data has been there for the feb and uh, jan and march now uh, the last step is to load this data so we'll go to home close and load All these data has been loaded and the sheets have been compi compiled. See, uh, January, March, and Feb. So all the files has been compiled. Now the next is efficient data transformation with Power Query. As you can see, the data is often inconsistent, messy, and needs to be cleaned and transformed for analysis and reporting purposes. So uh, let me give you an example. Suppose we have this data. This is global superstore data. So here we can see merged cells. The three cells are merged, merged uh, with the word Oceania. So now I want that this Oceania should be uh, in both of these cells also, not uh, only in the third cell. So can you please tell me in Excel, uh, how will you do it if I need this Oceania in bo uh, both of these cells also? Uh, anyone? Okay, uh, so in Excel, uh, what we do is, we'll first unmerge these cells. Now we'll select the column and we'll press uh, Control plus G for the go to dialog box. Now we'll uh, click on spatial blanks because we need to anyway fill the blanks which, which are uh, there after unmerging the cells. So we'll click on blanks and OK. Now uh, we want this, this, this Oceana should be in uh, both of these cells also. So we'll uh, type is equals to and we'll refer to this Oceania and press control enter. So it will uh, automatically fill all the cells which will be blank. So this is how we can do it in Excel. Now we can do th this same thing in Power Query also. See, when the data is inconsistent, so you can uh, handle merge cells in Excel like this. So these are the steps. And also uh, I want to share the reasons for merge cells in a data set. So uh, first of all, uh, merge cell can be due to aesthetic formatting. Uh, users may choose to merge cells to create a visually a passing layout or to emphasize certain headers or labels. So merging cells can be useful for creating more readable and organized spreadsheets. Uh, next is uh, centering text. So merge cells are often used to center a heading or title over a group of columns. This helps in creating a clearer structure in the spreadsheet. Then we have creating header cells or combining cells for presentation. So uh, in presentation generally or report generation, uh, users may merge cells to combine information from multiple cells into a single or more easily readable cell. So because of uh, these reasons, we can do merging cell. But due to merging cells, we, we can find so many challenges like sorting and filtering issues. So sorting and filtering issues can be a challenge. Uh, merge cells can uh, disrupt sorting and filtering functions in Excel. So when you attempt to sort or uh, filter a range that includes merge cells, the results may not be as expected. And also it will uh, give you a challenge in data analysis also. 
so mer cells can make it more challenging to perform certain types of data analysis such as creating pivot tables or using functions that require contiguous ranges so these type of challenges you can find now uh, we can do nisha if you don't mind i have two questions yes okay so you have told about the power query okay so i was asking in in my point of view uh, the data should be arranged in a specific order suppose in january the, in a column i have state so in feb also uh, in a column only i should have state otherwise mm -hmm. it will the data will be like uh, in a messy form correct yes yes, yes. yeah second all thing, the, the data should be in a same order yes second question is that in the the you have merged so in that first column you have not deleted suppose i don't want that column 1 column 2 column 3 i want the heading should be in a proper format so how to do that if you can tell uh so prashant the columns do not have to be in a specific order if your okay. column heading is correct for example if the sales the word sales the column header sales is mentioned as sales in all the three files correctly Mm -hmm. Then it will pick it up, irrespective of whether it's the first column or the third column. It will merge them. It will append them correctly, one below the other, right? But okay. if in one file sales is mentioned with a capital S, and in the other file sales is mentioned with a small s, so it cannot pick it up. So it is case sensitive. So the headers, yes, yeah, it is case sensitive. So the order does not matter, but it will pick it up. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, data yeah. should be in a clean format then only. Ha, ah, data should be clean. And uh, at least, if it, I mean, the data cleaning you can do in Power Query, but to combine multiple files, your headers should at least be consistent. That is a basic requirement. Okay. Otherwise, it will create a messy error. Otherwise, it won't. It will create multiple columns. So if you have sale and sales, it will give you two separate columns rather than appending them one below the other. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You can show uh, like merged in Power Query. Yeah. So the next is uh, we can how we can handle merge cells in Power Query. So let me give you the example. Suppose uh, this is the sheet. This is the data uh, on which we are working. So suppose this is the merged cells. Okay, so these are the merged cells. Now we need to convert it in table into table to get into Power Query. We can go to Power Query by using folder. Uh, so we can get into Power Query through two ways: from Excel or from table and ranges. So uh, we want this data into Power Query. So we we had converted it into a table. So now, when we go to the Power Query, we need to click this from Table and Range. Now, in Power Query, as you can see, these were the merged cells, but it will only show the first uh, cell, and the data will be uh, sorry, the the word will be only on the first cell, and the rest two two cells will will show null. So we need to uh, obviously. clean this data and we need that oceana should be in these two cells also so uh, what are the steps is we can uh, this is uh, this is the column in which uh, the merged cells are there you can show you can see this black line this black line shows that uh, here some col uh, some cells are none uh, are showing none so you can right click this you can go to fill and fill down if you will click this then the data will be uh, will get fine oceana will be in this these two cells also then you can simply close and load the data as we have done earlier let i'll show you also yeah so now you can see the data is fine after fill down
the next how you have taken, how you have taken to power query can you tell me shortcut yeah yeah wait Suppose this is the data. So we can go to Power Query through Excel and through table and ranges. So uh, if we want Excel files to be imported in Power Query, we can directly go to data, get data, which I have done before from file mm -hmm. and from Excel workbook. Okay, but if we want mm -hmm. that this data should be there in Power Query, so we can convert this data into a table. So table. We, okay. uh, control plus T. So it will, it is already a table right now. So it is not converting, but you can click, uh, you can uh, press control T. So it will be converted into table and then you can go to this option from table or range. So it will get inside the power query. Okay. Okay. One more question in my, in my mind coming, if I can ask that also, yes. suppose you have told, told me uh, like this, we can do, okay. Suppose there's one large data set. So many mm -hmm. null values are there. I want to remove some values. I want to like exchange. So like, uh, this is the thing, but. In the large data set, how, how someone can do means there are so many none values. Suppose I want to remove some values. I want to fill some values. So how can I do it in a very large data set? So suppose I have only given this example, but if in many, uh, many columns, there are null values. So similarly, you can do this, uh, selecting all the columns and then right click and simply fill down. So it will generate in all the, okay. not simply one column. It will do for all the columns. Okay. okay. The process is exactly the same, Prashant, irrespective of how huge your data is. That is the best part of our Power Query. Did I can open Power Query once? Yes. So whatever steps you do, for example, when Disha showed how to merge cells, within Excel, there are multiple steps that you have to do, right? Similarly, in correct, correct, Power correct. Query, any step that you do is getting recorded, right? So once Disha opens Power Query, on the right side, do you see something called applied steps? Hmm. Right? So when she does a fill down, Disha, can you do a fill down? Yes. Yeah. So when she does a fill down, fill. it's it it populated automatically, right? So let us hmm. say, uh, you can detect something from SAP or Salesforce or some other internal system. And this is the error that is always there in your data set. And you have to manually rectify it. Tomorrow, all you have to do is load your files from a folder. And once the folder is connected to the library, all you have to do is click on refresh. And refresh. Yeah. And these steps will automatically update on any new file that comes in. Given that the file structure is safe and the same errors are present in that file. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, Disha, uh, I want to ask one more thing. Uh, suppose you had told about their. Uh, January, February, March file, I want to combine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Suppose in my, there's one file in Excel. This is a basic thing, which uh, everyone is doing. Suppose there are 12 sheets January, till January to December. Okay. I want to combine all sheets in one sheet. Suppose master sheet I want to make. So how, like it will be the same process or like there will be anything different yeah. in one it Excel? Will be a, it will be the same process. Similarly, which same I have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But the data should be in a similar manner. Data should be in a similar manner. Okay. Disha, can you show combine from folder using combine directly, not going to transform? Can you do that once? Okay. Yeah. You want to uh, direct? Yeah, just yeah, get data from folder. Hmm. And just combine and combine. Combine, combine and transform. Yeah. Combine and transform, yeah. Hmm. Yes, you can tell them about this process as well. So here, Prashant, you will have to give a sample file. Everyone else is well. When you use this okay. method, you will have to give a sample file first. So let's say you have 12 files like you mentioned. Let's say all okay. of the files have 10 columns and one file has 12 columns. So the Correct. 12 columns have to be given as a sample. 
if a file with 10 columns is given as a sample and any other file has more than 10 columns, those columns will not be picked up, right? Okay. So you give a file as a sample, that is an exception. Uh, Tana, so usually, yeah. But your, your voice is not clearly audible. Hello? Am Tana, I audible now? Yeah. So I was saying, Prashant, if you have multiple files, you give sample from a file that is an exception. So let's say a file that has additional columns. Right? Mm -hmm. None of the files have any exceptions. They're exactly the same in terms of the structure. Column numbers, column headers are the same. Then you can directly you know, pick up any file as a sample and just click on OK. And then it will directly load the data for you. Okay. And if yeah. I have, if, if I want, if I have only one Excel file in that 12, multiple sheets are there. Sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet, sheet, sheet 12. Yeah. yeah. That also will work. No, I want a data in sheet 13 or like in a master sheet. That also will work. From sheets would not work. That for that, you have to use a VBA code. But that is also doable. Yeah, that is also doable using uh, Chat GPT. Yeah, if you can mail in your, if you can send me an email with a specific request, I'll give you the solution. Thanks. Okay, okay, I will do. I will do. Okay. Yeah, Disha, you can go carry on with the other examples that you have there. So this is data types and formatting. Uh, so suppose. Yeah, so uh, suppose this was our data. So now you can see here it is written ABC123, ABC123. But now we want that this uh, this should be a text uh, data form and this uh, this should be a whole number or currency data form. So we can directly change data sources from here. Click on this and then it will be a text here. We can uh, convert this also as a whole number or currency, whatever you want. Like this, we can change the data formatting, uh, everything on Excel, sorry, Power Query. The next example is split column in a Power Query. So uh, can you please tell me how we can do it in Excel if anyone knows? Okay, so in Excel, suppose we want, this is a customer name column. So we want to have a first name and last name. So how will we do is uh, select the column, then we'll go to data. Here we have text to columns. So we'll go to this delimited and we'll go to next. We'll select the delimiter. Delimiter will be space. Uh, in the customer name column because we need the first name and last name. So space will be there and we'll go to next and then finish. So we'll get the uh, two, we get two columns where we have first name and last name. Then after that, we can rename the columns. But how to do it in Power Query is So uh, this was the column from which we need uh, first name and last name. So what we'll do is we'll go to home and then split column by delimiter. The delimiter means uh, the space uh, from where we, uh, we want to uh, split the column. Space will be the delimiter. And if we'll click on OK. See, it will give me two columns, first name and last name. So we'll then rename the columns.
Here you can see the steps are mentioned. Split column by delimiter, then renamed columns. Then you can simply close and load to load the data in our Excel sheet. The next is conditional column. So suppose uh, in a sales data set, uh, if you want to categorize customers based on their purchasing behavior. So uh, like here, I, I have mentioned the example, you need to create a new column that flex customers as high value. If their total purchases exceed a certain threshold, otherwise label them as regular value. So we can do this in this data set also. Before that, I want to also tell you that uh, why conditional column, uh, why why do we need to make a conditional column? So conditional column are here for data cleaning also. For example, suppose uh, you have a uh, you have a column with date values, and you want to create a new column indicating whether each date is a weekend or not. So you can use a conditional column to check if the day of the week is Saturday or Sunday and label it accordingly. Categorization is the uh, another reason where uh, you might have a column containing numerical values and you want to categorize them into different ranges, low, medium, high, just now what I told you. So using a conditional column, you can define the criteria for each category and create a column with the corresponding labels. The next reason can be segmentation. So uh, in, a, in marketing or in marketing analysis, you may want to segment customers based on their purchase history. Like uh, you can use a, a conditional column to categorize customers as new, regular or loyal based on specific criteria. So what we'll do here is, this was the data. Now I want that, uh, see, this is the quantity column. So now I want that uh, I need a different column where I want that the quantity, the, the persons who have purchased, suppose above eight, so they are the high value customers and the, the below eight persons should be regular customers. So how we'll do it, add column, custom column, sorry, not um, custom column, conditional column is there. Right. Add column, conditional column. Then here, this is a condition. Suppose uh, it is asking for column name. So the column name is quantity. then operator will be is greater than and the value we have decided is 8 the output will be high value and if suppose the the customer has not bought above 8 quantity so uh, the power query can give us regular customer So this has given us a column where it is uh, classified them into regular customer, high value customers. So everything will be classified here. So this is known as conditional column. Now the uh, last, Dish. yes sir. Uh, Dish, uh, can you open the Excel workbook? Let's show them one more example, which Prashant yes. was asking, where we combine data from the same workbook, multiple mm. sheets into a single table, like he was mentioning, right? So open any the data set that you have, and uh, from folder, right? No, not from folder. Same Excel. Just uh, break the data into two, so you can create three more duplicates, two more duplicates for this data. Mm. Okay, wait. No, no, within that same sheet, within that same sheet. In that same Excel, just create a duplicate. Uh, duplicate orders are compact in the same workbook. Create just create a copy. 
सेम वर्कबुक सेम वर्कबुक हाँ हाँ सेम वर्कबुक रीड कॉपी डू इट वन मोर टाइम and you can i can delete the, this table right yeah you can delete table you can delete the table for now in the first sheet hmm. yes sir uh, in the first sheet only filter for uh, one segment one category so if you scroll towards the right you have hmm. your categories yes yeah so just keep any one remove the other two right from filter delete the other two hmm. it's a keeping We have to delete two, Desha. So you choose technology and one more. Yeah, technology. Only technology. Yeah, no. So you have to choose technology and after supplies. Acha, okay. Yeah, and delete it so that we are left with only one category in this file. Delete everything below row one. Below row one, I need to delete everything. Ha, ha. Delete everything. Okay. Right. So if you remove the filter, we're only left with furniture. Right? Furniture as a category in this file, right? And since the data is quite large, it will take some time to load. So let's just do it with two sheets, wherein in one sheet we have data only for furniture, and in the other sheet we have technology and office supplies. Let's wait for a second. Data rows so that we can then perfect. Uh, you can just unfilter this, right? So now we are only left with furniture. You can select it. Clear the filters. Yeah. And you can go to the other sheet, auto compact two. Right here, you can only keep technology and office supplies. So you will have to delete furniture. You have to delete furniture from the data set. No, no, this one you have to delete furniture. You have to only select furniture and delete it. I need to only select furniture. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Right, and you will delete uh, all of this. So, uh, everyone in the orders compact sheet, we only have data for furniture, and in order compact two, we have data for office supplies and technology. This way, if you can just unfilter this, mm, nice. Yeah. And you can delete the first sheet, which is order compact three. Order compact what? three. Yeah, you can delete that one. It's only really, yeah, and convert both of these into a table. Right. It is already a table, sir. So. Perfect. Okay, and no, you can yeah. create a blank query. So you will have to go to get data. Right. From other a... and then blank query, blank query, right? Yes, blank query. Uh, Excel dot current workbook this one. So we the any step that you do in Power Query automatically writes a formula for you. So you don't have to write a formula. Uh, current workbook this one. Current workbook. And uh, in case it doesn't, and you want to write formulas on your own, then this the language in Power Query is called M code. It's created by Microsoft. So you will have to learn it if you want to write formulas in it. And this, if you just run this query, we'll get a list of the current workbooks that we have. I think you have to close the brackets at the end. Open and close, right? 
Yeah, did you run it? Close and load directly. Just run that query. Excel dot current workbook. It'll give a list of uh, the current workbooks that we have. I sure both of these are tables. It's not giving. Can you just check the parameters? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you do Excel dot workbook, it tells you that there are two sheets and two ranges as well. So any range that you highlight as a table, so if it's like four cells and press Control T and make it as a table, it will convert that as well. And in the first column, like Disha had done earlier, where she was transforming, Disha, if you click on content, the double arrows, right? If you hover your mouse on top of that, it shows you the list of all the columns and you just click OK, right? Like Disha had done earlier. And we're seeing a lot of null values because we had deleted rows from between. But essentially, this is how you can combine multiple sheets from the same workbook as well. Yeah, so Prashant. Yes, now it, now it is clear. Now it is clear. Two step. Open path to convert your all of your sheets into tables. Hmm. You will just have all the sheets that are there and just expand and click OK. And you're done. Okay. The shake it. Yes, sir. Yeah, so these are the simple tips and tricks regarding Power Query. So shortcut key to directly open Power Query editor is Alt plus F12. So if you are on this sheet and you will press uh, Alt F12, so it will directly open Power Query editor for you. Here you can see all the queries and all, which whichever will be there. You don't need to go to data, then get data and all. It will directly open. The next is you can use go, uh, go to column to directly jump on a column. It will be useful uh, when you have many columns, like 20 plus columns or 30 plus columns. So this trick can be useful. For that, what you need to do is You can go to home, then choose columns and then go to column. So suppose uh, it will open the list of all the columns. This will be only useful when you have so many numbers of columns. So uh, if you will click on discount and okay, so it will directly jump on the discount column for you. The next is uh, do not press dot while typing function. I have mistakenly did this thing before also. Simply write function name and press tab. Uh, like this. Wait. So as you have seen, this Power Query editor was open. So I was not able to work on any Excel sheet. Like it was giving me an error. It was it was not clicking on anything. So if your Power Query editor is open, you cannot work on uh, other Excel sheet. So you need to first close it down. So if suppose I want to write a function here is equals to Excel dot workbook. So I have written Excel dot. Now if I'll press tab, it will excel dot workbook i have written and now if i'll press tab it will give me excel excel so two time excel will be there so it, it will obviously give the error and it will not run so when i'm typing any function i i need to simply type the function and press tab i don't need to give the dot in between so it will uh, directly take your function name 
then the next is uh, press enter after typing function for help in power query similarly press fx in excel as uh, you can see suppose i have written a function here if you will click on this fx it is already opened Like, first of all, let me tell you in Excel, what we do is if suppose we need a function help. So what we'll do is we'll click on this FX and it will give us all the functions. So whatever function we'll click, it will give us help for that function. So similarly, this thing we can do from Power Query. Suppose I've chosen this function and I'll click on FX. So it will give me the help for this function. Uh, there are many functions in Power Query. So you can't learn every, each and every function. So suppose if you are typing this function and you want the help for that, so it will give you uh, each and every explanation for that function. So the last is uh, press control shift plus key for zoom in and control uh, press control shift minus key for zoom out or for the Excel, uh, sorry, for the Power Query editor. Uh, any questions? So Deshan, you will share this recording for the feature purpose because it will be very useful. Yes, yes, yes we'll share the recording. Okay. Uh, this one has a question in chat, if you can show that once. Okay, I'll wait. Sir. So, Mitali is saying, okay, you told us about split column, but how to yeah. extract data from any column, right? Okay, wait. Uh, suppose this is the ship date which is there so in this um, month and year both are given with the date so uh, suppose i only need this uh, month uh, like november february and october i only need the month from this uh, column so it will be called extract data from the column okay so for that let me go to power query we need to select this column ship date then uh, we need to go on transform tab and after that we uh, we should go on extract and uh, as you can see here you can see the two delimiters are there dash okay so we need to select text between delimiters you can write the start delimiter which is this and end delimiter which is this and then when you click ok so it will give you the month number which was showing here. So the month number is there. This is called extract data from the columns. And similarly, if you need the date or year, it will give you that. Where you have, from where you have selected the column? Split, split column? Yeah, transform, then this. Uh, no, no, transform, then extract. And text <laughs> between delimiters. It is extracting the data from the column. And the previous example which I have shared was splitting column. Okay, okay. So, Disha, can you go back to the Excel file? Original Excel file. Yeah. Original Excel file. Hmm. So I was having this one question. I was making the dashboard recently in the power. So hmm. in this, it is written 13 November 2021. Why that same thing is not coming in the power? Query, just a question I'm asking. Like, I wanted November. I want a November in that power query. So, how it will come? Like, it, it is there any chance it will come or it is coming in a number format? So, can we do it? Just asking. Wait. Tala, the data, the, this data structure is changed. That's why it's not coming. 
I want the data type. Data type. Let's make it just a date. Date is coming. Yeah, this is what you want. You just want the date, right? Um, I want like in like November in a format. Like we want that the same data should be there. No, no, no. That won't be. Uh, that won't be possible. Won't be visible. It won't be visible that way here. Right, so because one, one, one. yeah, yeah, because uh, Parkway has a certain format. Because if you write 30 November 2021, Parkway mm -hmm. will not know what. So, Disha, if you just now in Excel, that is formatted the date, right? But correct, in, correct, correct. in Power Query, if you just have a data set in Excel, where, you, where you've written 13 November 2021, when you load it to Power Query, since in Excel it was a date Power Query, Power Query picked up, but let's say your number was misspelled, See. Power Query would not have picked that up, right? So in that okay. case, it would not know what it is. So it would make it a text, right? ABC123, which was a data type, default data type. It does not know whether it is a number or a text because both of those values are there in the same cells. Okay. So power is a little, little rigid, but then it ensures that your data is of the correct quality. So it forces you to improve your data quality before you take any data set to park with. Okay, okay. I think it will also not come when we, when someone is making dashboard in Power BI. Actually, I was doing I was not doing this thing. So I was doing first time. No. Uh, in Power BI, you can always write a DAX measure, or you can in Power Query also you can create another column. Another you, column. Uh -huh, you create another column where you use a function. Like you can create a conditional column or a new column or a column from example. Disha, do you want to show a column from example? I think that will work. So uh, in Excel, you have something called as flash fill, right? Um, hmm, let's a flash fit. Uh, can you just copy the customer name table in the file? In Excel. Uh, I'll quickly, uh, Disha will demonstrate what flash fill is. And then she will show the same thing, how it works in Power Query. Disha, just copy the customer name. Uh, just create a column. Copy that in a new file. Just copy and paste it in a new file. Or a new sheet, or a new sheet that that works. New sheet, new sheet also works, right? And uh, you can give a sample from B two in B two. Just write Aaron in B two. B two. What I need Just to write? write the first name in cell B two. Write Aaron mm -hmm. in B two. And press control E. Right. So this is something called as flash fill, wherein you give Excel a sample, and when you press the shortcut control E, which is in the data tab, Arisha, if you can go to data tools besides text to column. This in data besides text to column on the right. Oh. Go to text to column option in data. Oh, okay, text to columns. Yeah. Besides that, there is a flash fill option. You can just point that out above that. Right? So that's the flash fill. You can just keep your mouse on that without clicking. I am sorry. Uh, uh, my app is better now. Is my audio clear now? Sir, it is better. So you are not audible. Just hover your mouse over the flash fill option. Yeah. This one. No, no, no. In the data tab. Hmm. Right? So it says that flash fill automatically fills in values. This is an example that you give. And if you are in the active cell, this is the example that you've given you can extract the value. So you don't have to necessarily write the formula and it does not write the formula for you. So tomorrow, if the names change, if Aaron becomes Talha Parkar, then it will not extract the first name because there is no formula being written. So these are temporary changes, but very quick data cleaning changes. So uh, if uh, Risha, you can add a column before column A. 
right and in a2 in the cell a2 if you can give an example of the last name just write bergman Control. Uh, enter the control. Right? So whatever sample you give, it picks it up. Now here it is working in only one sample because the data is quite clean. There are no errors. We just have first name and last name. Similarly, there is something called as column from example. Right? So this way, if you can just show them column from example in Power Query. Mm -hmm. They can just pick up column B. You don't need the others, or you can take this entire data set also, or just compile. Okay, entire data set. Right? Yeah, yeah, just take the entire data set. So now and, what we need? Uh, go to add column. Okay, add column. Column from example. First one. From all columns, right? From selection. From selection. So uh, at the top, you can see that it tells you to enter a sample value to create a new column and press control at the top line. So it is being applied on the order date column. So if you write, Disha, if you can just write 11 November 2021. Press and control enter. Uh, give it another sample. So sometimes you might have to give more than one sample for the data to work. And you can see that the order date column is selected, right? Uh, just hold that, Prashant. So Prashant, this is how you can get the... So your column. voice is not audible. Add column. We can add column. Achha. Yeah, add column, then column from examples. And from selection. Selection. Mm -hmm. this you is everyone, if you look at the top row where the formula bar is, the query editor, it is writing a formula for you. Right? Mm -hmm. Next mm -hmm. Yeah, so it writes the formula for you, unlike Excel, where it does not write the formula. Right? So this is the right. pressure. So if you just press OK, it will create the formula. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to change the data for it to become date one. Right. But then again, it becomes right. So, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understood. I understood. Then, the case, then you can do it from a column. Domain. I think, uh, Disha, that's all you had for them? Yes, sir. Uh, perfect. If anyone has any other questions, you can ask that and we'd be happy to answer. Or else, thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you, Disha, for an uh, enlightening session on Power Query. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. Okay, you thank you, thank you. So, the recording uh, will be shared on the mail? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Disha will send you an email. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, Disha. Thank you, Thanks thank you, Disha. Thank you.